Uh, so I'm here today to talk about the lives lost on our roads in South Australia over the last five days. There have been four lives lost in South Australia over the last five days on our roads. The first life lost occurred on Saturday the 19th of February at 7.20pm on Brighton Road at Brighton. A vehicle has collided with a person in a wheelchair and the occupant of that wheelchair, a 47 year old man from Brighton, has subsequently died. Major Crash are conducting an investigation into the circumstances surrounding this collision. The second life lost occurred at Monbala near Panola. The collision occurred at about 6.12 a.m. on Tuesday the 22nd of February on Claywells Road at Mumbala. It was a single vehicle rollover where the driver was ejected and subsequently died at the scene. A 21-year-old male, a man from Mount Gambia, has died as a result of this collision. Based on an examination of the scene, it would appear the male was not wearing a seatbelt and this contributed to his death. Major Crash Investigation Section are conducting an investigation into the collision and will prepare a report for the coroner. The third life lost occurred at Pelican Lagoon in Kangaroo Island. This collision occurred at about 9.38am on Tuesday the 22nd of February. A truck has collided with a four-wheel drive on Hog Bay Road at Pelican Lagoon. A woman in her 40s has subsequently died as a result of this collision. Major Crash Investigation Section are conducting an investigation into the circumstances surrounding this collision. The fourth life lost on our road has occurred at Sedan at about 10 p.m. on Wednesday the 23rd of February. A male was located by police on the side of Halfway House Road at Sedan. An examination of the man has determined he was struck by an unknown vehicle. Police are appealing to anyone who was driving on Halfway House Road at Sedan on the 23rd of February who may have any information relating to this collision to please call Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. Uh, any questions? Um, given the isolated nature of, presumably isolated nature of the road at Sedan, is it likely that you're not going to get witnesses? Uh, police are appealing to anyone who may have any information or may have been driving on that road at that time to come forward. Are there any more details you can share about what a 70 year old man was doing out in a road in a rural area like that? Uh, as I said, the investigation is continuing as to why he was out there and what was and what's occurred leading up to the collision, and that'll be formed part of the investigation. And do you know what relevance the, the red truck that his body was appeared to be in front of? Yeah. So there was a, a red camper van at the scene and uh, major crash investigation section have looked into this camper van and believe it doesn't have anything to do with um, the collision that's occurred with the mail. Is it on the road or by the side of the road? What is the exact location? Of the van. Of the body. Uh, sorry, the, the, the man was found on the side of the road. Did it appear that he, I mean obviously this is part of the investigation, that he was on his way somewhere, um, or that he was walking beside the road or that's all part of the investigation? Yeah, that's part of the investigation that will continue. Was it his camper van? Do you know that? Uh, that's part of the investigation as well. I believe he was, he did have some relation to that camper van. It wasn't a, a man van on the side of the road. So do you is, have is the owner least? of that camper van? Do you uh, have the owner of that camper van? Yes, there was another person with that camper van. At the time of the incident? At the time of the incident, yes. So is that a witness to the incident at the time? Or was that no, no, no. Yeah, the investigation will continue on, but it's not believed that the van's involved with the injury sustained by the um, person on the side of the road. And is there a message for the driver who, who kept on? Yeah, there's, uh, there's obviously an obligation for people to stop if they're involved in a collision, and we'd urge that driver to come forward to police. Um, and if anyone else has any information or may have been driving on that road around at that time that has information to come forward and provide whatever information they do have to police. In relation to the person who was inside that, that camper van that you mentioned, would, did they render assistance to the individual who was dying? Um, I'm going to say at this stage. Was that camper van on the side of the road before the accident or did it get there afterwards? Yeah, I can't say at this stage. I believe it was there prior to. 
what would uh, how would you describe the past five days on South Australian roads? Uh, any life lost on the roads tragic, it leaves behind family members um, and friends and has a lasting impact on the community. It's not just um, a number, it has a lasting impact on everyone who's related to that person in the communities that they are a part of and that, that devastation continues long after the event itself. So we'd be appealing to the public just to continue to practice safe driving behaviours, to continue to wear seat belts, to be vigilant when they're driving and uh, practice safe driving behaviours, not only to look after yourself, but the community that you're a part of. Do you presume that the driver of the car who hit the man knew he hit someone or something? Uh, they'll form part of the investigation. Yeah. And getting back to the, the camper van, there's obviously a link between the man who died and the camper van. Was it someone who owned the camper van who knew the deceased? Can you give us some idea of the link between the two? It's not believed that the camper van was involved in the the male in terms of his death um, and the rest of everything else will um, come under the investigation. So could he have known the person who owns the van? Yeah, that will form part of the investigation. Does it appear that he was at the location because of the van? Because it's it's on the road. Yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll, form part, it'll form part of the investigation and the, the further details will be released later. Is it a, a indicative of the, the danger particularly on our roads in, in country areas that over the past five days aside from the crash and drive and the rest of them have been in rural areas? Absolutely. So last year there was, um, I think it was around 70% of lives lost were on our rural roads and that trend is continuing this year with 80% of the lives lost on the roads in South Australia occurring in rural areas. Um, so we'd be pleading to the public once again to practice safe driving behaviours when you are driving on rural roads regardless of whether you live in the area or not. Um, you need to practice safe driving behaviours, take breaks and uh, make sure you drive into the conditions. Well, what are those safe driving parameters that you mentioned? Can you just go through them? Uh, wearing your seatbelt, not um, using drugs or alcohol and then driving, making sure that you're not fatigued, making sure that you're sticking within the speed limit but also driving to the conditions and make sure that you're not being distracted by um, speaking to other people, mobile phones, any other behaviours within the car while you're driving, make sure you're not distracted. Was the man a local? Did the man a local man? No, I can't, don't have that information. Do you know if there was a, a property close to where the hit run happened? I don't, yeah, I don't have that information. So you don't know if the man is local, so you, have you been able to establish his identity at all? Uh, yes, the man has been identified. So is he, is he a local man from Sudan or is he... Uh, he's a 70 year old man from Angus Valley. Yes. Is it uh, in relation to the investigation on the second crash uh, down in the southeast part of the state, which has revealed that the man wasn't wearing, or um, you said it was a man who wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Uh, what do you make of that kind of behaviour? Well, not wearing a seatbelt um, obviously increases your risk of serious injury or death dramatically if you're involved in a collision. So we'd encourage everyone, no matter where you are, no matter where you're driving, to wear a seatbelt. Because if you don't wear a seatbelt, the chances of you becoming seriously injured or dying in a collision increases dramatically. Is there any no. evidence at the scene that would indicate what sort of car may have hit the man or for any reason in that regard at all? No, there's, there's no, we can't presume what sort of car or truck or any, what the type of vehicle was that struck the man. And we're requesting that anyone that has any information to come forward you have a, an idea of the extent of injuries, whether it was a small car or no. a massive truck or anything? No. no. Was it believed that he was lying on the road for a period of time, quite a substantial period of time before help was uh, help arrived? Yeah, I don't know how long the man was on the man was on the road prior to help arriving that. Who found him? Uh, police found him at the scene. Oh. Right, so police were driving along and found him. Police, were called. police have received a call from a member of the public. Um, and have subsequently attended and located the man and that will form part of the investigation. Does that mean that the public still there when police arrived? Uh, yeah, that will continue as part of the investigation. Okay, well done. Thanks, Thanks Angus. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Please.